progress in Italian cycling being stamped today on the Flesh Wallon. 204 kilometers, 128 miles, and just 16 kilometers left to go. These three men, they found themselves clear, they looked at each other, and they decided to go for it. And they're hovering at around about a minute, minute and a half all the time. The man of the Belgian Ardennes, Moreno Argentine, 33 years of age, now riding his last season. Jojo Ferland, winner of Milan San Remo, and little Evgeny Berzin, who rode so well in Liège, Baston Liège. He's now a star of the future. Three generations almost represented in this breakaway. Latest check. Coming down just a little bit, a minute and 24 seconds, we go back out onto the main road, heading now towards the Belgian borders with Holland, the river Meuse on the left becomes the Maas when it crosses over the borders, and the three leaders now hovering at that leader, around about 80 seconds. It's going to be touch and go, they've still got to come, the climb of the Côte d'Eref, and then they'll go along to the town of Huy, and they'll face the very sharp climb up to the finishing line, 20%. Or one in five is the gradient of the climb. It's just about a mile long, and they climb all of the way to the line. Well, the new team this year, the Gavis team from Italy, continuing a trend that has gone on right since the start of the season with the great success of the Italians. 14.8 kilometers to go. That's around about nine miles to the finish. And little Evgeny Berzan setting the pace. He still got his old pursuit style that took him to the World Pursuit Championship when he rode for the Soviet Union, uh, when the World Championships were in Maibashi in Japan in 1990. And he just sits there. He rode them off his wheel in Liège, Baston Liège, the other day. And his, uh, if he finishes in the first three today, he'll lift also the extra prize of winning the Ardenne Weekend Prize when they used to run both of these events Saturday and Sunday. This is back to the chase group here. And this is Johan Museu. Museo really is doing all of the work and I think he's trying to do it because he wants his teammates to get up there and not not least Marco Saligali who's having a very good season and also in this group we've got uh, Cassani, David Cassani also riding very very well indeed Mapai class have a couple of good men up here there's Cassani going through the picture now it's still quite a large field uh, just here it's thinned out a lot on the climbs but it hasn't thinned out completely but there's nobody seems to want to reshape the chase they're leaving it all to GB and if they do that they know that Museo wants to get up there sure but if they keep on doing this then they're going to give this race to the three boys from Gavis and I can't remember a previous uh, flesh wall on which started back in the 30s that ever produced three riders of the same team crossing the line together well there's the leaders now as they start one of the small climbs there are ten climbs throughout the Ardennes most beautiful area of the Ardennes, the Côte d'Arras. 10% at its steepest point and 2.6 kilometers long. No Tony Rominger in the race today. After his disappointment in Liège, Baston Liège. But the question is, would he have won if he had not have had that puncture so near the end on the climb up to the finishing line? I somehow doubt it myself. But even so, he's now headed off to the start of the Tour of Spain, where he's hoping to repeat for the second time a victory there so that'll give him three straight wins if he does that and that'll be a record for Romiga and hopefully will stand him in good stead for a fine challenge in the Tour de France against Miguel in Jirain in Jirain of course not riding his home tour and this breakaway sharing the work equally together doing long turns at the front and if anything Argentin the captain is doing fewer than the other two but he's riding at the back and keeping an eye on them both and I'm just wondering what will happen if they start to climb the Fui together and whether indeed Berzan will do exactly what he did in Liège, Baston Liège and dance away from the rest of the group. What a great double that would be. Menino Argentin who says that he will retire at the end of the season. Well, the World Championships are in his own country this year. He was the World Champion when they were held in Colorado Springs in 1986. The same year, by the way, he won Liège, Baston Liège for the second time same year too he had five victories marvelous ride he's had his high spots and his low spots one of his high spots came with the pink jersey in the tour of italy last year and he held the lead for a few days before eventually found its way to the shoulders of miguel in Durain yet again and there he is this great italian and i suppose representing three generations of italian cyclists here well not italian cyclists on the italian team because berzan is the young man of the group 
he is just 23 years of age. Then you go to Furlan, who's 28, and then we go to Grandad, who's a massive 33. There he is. This is Kasani. Now, surely they must realise this is virtually the last part of the course where they'll get a real shot at those three leaders. The gap is going up a little bit. It's a minute 34, but they've got to react here. And it looks as though Kasani wants to do something about it. He wants the GB boys back in the action here, and this is Casagrande going through, Francesco Casagrande. And so the gaps are beginning to close a little bit. Stefano della Santa went through. There's Claudio Chiapucci, Stefan Rux, the gaps are falling. No sign of the world champion, Lance Armstrong, who was with this group. Big man, Franco Ballerini closing down the gap onto the wheel of Rux. And there is Gianni Bugno through, and the number 21, there's Raul Alcala. So perhaps Alcala too is finding his form now in time for the upcoming stage races. Alcala will be spearheading the, along with Lance Armstrong, the Tour du Pont in the United States. Big legs here at Casa Grande. And in fact, Cassani wants a little bit of help. He's done his bit to try and liven them up, but there's not a big reaction coming through. Stefano Della Santa goes through, still feeling the chill winds blowing across the Ardennes here. With his legs on and his arm warmers. 2-1-2 two, two is Raul Alcala. And then just popping into the picture here, Claudio Chiapucci. Ballerini, Ronan Pensek. And they're all scrabbling for wheels here at the moment. So it looks as though at last we've got a little bit of a reaction. Kasani's got to the back of the line. Kengi Alta is the rider just in front of him. He's the guard dog for the Gavis team. He had his chance to go with the break. He saw it go and he couldn't quite get onto it. And then he fell back into this group. We now have the complete composition of the group here. Giovanetti is the other rider in this group, number 44. Bunyo is here, still feeling fresh after his great victory in the Tour of Flanders, which is a Certainly a race very few Italians can ever say they've won. So the Mapai class team, even without their leader, Tony Romiga, are having a good race in this chase group. Just over eight kilometers left to go. It's around about five miles, so four miles to the climb of the Hui. There goes Pensek, followed by Cassani. And a very laid back position there of the Mexican Raul Alta. Seems to sit right back on his bike, long extension. And just a little uh, little tap on the, the backside there of uh, Kengi Alta by a Mexican rider. He's probably just warning him where he was for the left-hand corner there. This is back up to the team time trial. I mean, Berzi must feel rather at home now. He was part of the Team Pursuit World Championship team in 1990. The track's a bit bigger. It's uh, 204 kilometres today instead of the four kilometres he rode at the time. But even so... The feeling must be the same, riding in line with two teammates. And that wouldn't surprise me if they've trained this way together as well. Well, the gap, I think, on that climb had to come down to round about 30 seconds to give the chasers a chance to get up to these three riders. Pressure being applied at the front again. And it's Berzan now who's having to grit his teeth and hang on at the back. And it's, uh, in fact, Giorgio Ferlan who's reacting at the front. There must be a message coming up from the team manager here, which is probably going to say, listen, you're hovering at about a minute 15. If you crack now, they'll be on you. I think we're going to see a lot of Evgeny Berzan because he started to flower this year as a professional. He turned pro in 1993. And how the cycling scene has changed since the Soviet Union dissolved and disappeared and split up into its own nations again. We've seen so many young riders who once rode for the red flag, now riding for themselves as professionals. And it's taken a couple of years to settle in, but they're coming through now. Six kilometers to go. So three and a half miles, two and a half miles up to the actual climb, and that's Berzan, who's now stretching them out again. A little bit drab today, the Ardennes. They can be very sunny, but usually at this time of the year, it still looks a little bit like winter down here. But the roads are made for cycling. They run a lot of tourist competitions too, which uh, cyclo-tourists enjoy. Long rides such as Tilth Baston Tilth, which follows mainly the route of Liège Baston Liège. It's only slightly shorter. 
by about 30 kilometers, but it usually tracks about eight to 9,000 riders in the summer. And there's Argentin riding out his last season and still with the great legs he's had for so, so many years. He turned pro back in the, at the end of 1980, so he's in his 14th season as a pro, which is tremendous. I can remember back in 1990, he signed one of the richest contracts at the time, which was $400,000 to ride for Ariostea, a team which is sadly no longer part of the professional scene, but you know, many of the riders still excelling as they spread themselves throughout the teams. And 118, so they're absolutely pegging now the chase group uh, of Raul Alcala's group there, which we're not seeing ending off at the moment, I'm afraid. Our host TV cameras not cutting back to the chase, but the three leaders are not hesitating at all. And they're going to feel very, very confident now that as that gap has not come down for something like 25, 30 kilometers significantly, then they know now that they can probably hold their own speed and just fight it out on the climb of the Muir de Puy. Superb crowd as ever on top of the hill. The one little restaurant on the summit. Well, if you ever want to eat in it when the flesh will on is on, you need to get there pretty early. There's Gianni Bugno still trying to do something. David Castane, Claudio Chiapucci passing off to our right. And Ronan Pensek. Well, they're still driving on. I think they've left it a little bit too late, I'm afraid. And this group, to me, looks as though it's thinned out too. Casagrande is still here, the other side of Bugno in the yellow. Claudio Chiapucci should be feeling he can climb the hill well to get himself a nice finish at the top of it. So too Pensek. He once uh, finished uh, very high in the Tour de France, came, was coming back the next year to ride the Tour de France as a favourite and fell off the roof of his house just before it started and broke his collarbone. That, and he didn't even manage to ride the Tour that second time out. But he'll be back again this year riding for the Nova My team. So, if all the most of the work I feel is being done by Berzin, with the second most being done by Furlan, and uh, the captain here, in charge of the ship, just sitting around at the back. He's just checking over his shoulder to make sure there's no sign of any more cars in the distance, but frankly, there are still over a minute 18 back, so there won't be. This is the flat valley run now, which will take them into Hui, and then we'll make the turn up the climb. And it must be a great feeling. This has been a very, very daring escape indeed. And if three riders of the same team can crack a quality feel like they've done today, then they really are the very, very best. Because, mark my words, there's no way riders in this group would have allowed three men in the same colour jersey to go clear if they could have done anything at all about it. And Bunyo must be feeling a little bit annoyed with himself for allowing the breakaway to go. There's no question which riders had the form, Berzan and Furlan. Argentine was in that breakaway too at Liège, Baston Liège. When he'd done his job over Lara Dute, he was dropped. But uh, he obviously has the form. And who knows, he may have dropped off to save that little bit of energy for today. He's always been known as the man of the Ardennes. Four times winner of Liège, Baston Liège. Twice second and twice a winner of this race, Flesh Will On. Looking for his hat trick today. He's going to have a tough job though. Up against his younger teammates. We're now into Hui, and the town watching to see if these three have survived. It was on the second climb of the climb up here, where they went clear, and they've held them off ever since. A little look at the faces, not giving anything away at all. As we've now got Furland setting the pace. I haven't seen Argentin up there for quite a long time. Argentin holding close order in second place. It's a very, very frightening start to the climb, the Muir de Hui. You make the turn, and then you see the wall. One kilometre to go. Little steady climb, but it'll kick very shortly when they switch to the right. And Argentine is holding second place. Berzan pedalling a much slower gear and looking threatening there. Now we're making the turn. There's the current gradient, 20% or 1 in 5, bringing him up only to 129 metres above sea level, about 400 feet. But it's the way it gets there so quickly. This is where it starts to really dig into the legs now. And it narrows down as we go round to the right. Then it'll move round to the left. 
and it looks to me as though Berzan is planning to do something here. He's moving into sight, he knows the climb, but he, he can't make you move too early because it is an awful long way to the summit. So Berzan looking to be threatening. There's a chance to look at his uh, cluster at the back there. It looks like he's riding a 21 or 22 back sprocket. He did have a 39 inside ring on. And in fact, the other two are beginning to move away. And it's Argentine. Can you believe this? It's Argentine who's starting to go away. And Berzan, there's a gap there. If he doesn't get his teeth and close it, he'll be gone. He's sitting down. He's pedaling a much lower gear than the others. And that's not a good sign now. In fact, Berzan seems to resign himself to third place. The winner of Liege Baston Liege has dropped off the back. He'll win the Ardennes weekend, that's for sure. And that's more money in the team pot. But it looks as though he's leaving his two senior men to go forward here and it's Argentine at the front and Giorgio Ferlan the winner of Milan San Remo and now it looks as though Argentine his face really is so calm he's hardly making the effort here as he rides away and look at the crowd of people a little bit stunned I think to see three riders from the same team come back up here and the Jeeves team has annihilated Fleshwell on this year what a marvellous job they've done about it as well they broke away on this climb the second time up. Kengi Alta could have made it the first four. He fell back. And now, can Moreno Argentine crown what is his final season with a classic victory? And I'm wondering, in fact, if Ferlan will make any effort at all to stop him doing that. Verzan very concerned about the race behind now because his race is over. It's the third place or nothing for him. And a very steady climb, too, for Moreno Argentine. Well, I've never seen a rather stunned Belgian crowd like this before. They're politely applauding the three riders coming up for the Italian team. But I've seen scenes on this climb in the past where they've mobbed the riders on the way up. And they're watching now Moreno Argentin, a man they should know better than most Belgians on this climb, who's finished twice second in 1985 and 1988. He won the race in 1990 and 1991. And in fact, they've cheered an Italian winner up here for the last four years and looks like being five years now Claudio Chiapucci bringing the chase group up got his rhythm going nicely but he's too far down the climb they won't close the gap now it'll probably be down to around about 35 seconds by the finish Argentine goes again just as it looked as though Giorgio Ferland slipped the gear up a notch Ferland still trying to hold his wheel but you know Argentine has got all of the legs and there's no reply from Ferland Argentine wins it for the third time almost a casual crossing of the line too by Giorgio Ferland, the winner of Milan San Remo and they're, well, they're going to mob Argentine now as Berzan will finish in third place he's concerned about the chase, he's, he's right off the power in fact the chase is not very far behind him but Giorgio Ferland will finish second, Evgeny Berzan takes third place and now the race behind, this is the main field also on the climb now Eric Broikink in the champion of Holland's colours there followed by Stefan Rux he fell back, this is the group that split up, in fact there's a group in front of this fighting out the finish. As our camera's got himself caught up in the main pack coming up here on the climb. But somewhere up the front is definitely Gianni Bunyo in that leading group along with Raul Alcala. Raul Alcala's right in front of me here now, so he's gone away from this group, Gianni Bunyo. As they come up towards the line now, and this looks like Della Santa and Bunyo. Della Santa I think he's going to get it, but there's a kick there from Bunyo. Della Santa keeping a wary eye on him, but Bunyo is coming up. As in, it looks as though Della Santa decided to go onto the wheel of Bunyo. Bunyo's come through. So Berzan is third, Bunyo is fourth, Della Santa is fifth. They've got clear of that chase group on the climb itself. And Chiapucci giving best here to Francesco Casagrande. A victory for the third time. And he's had two second places as well. Moreno Argentine is going to say farewell to the sport with flying colours this year. But a 1-2-3 for his team. Then comes Gianni Bunyo and Della Santa, followed by Casa Grande. This has been a very memorable fresh wall on. The Belgians may not like it, the Italians certainly will. It's their fifth straight victory in a row. And the first time I can remember three riders in the same team taking first, second and third. And I hope you've enjoyed being part of it. Remember, more good stuff still to come. We have the show of the Tour de France. Will Romaga beat Injurain this time? And the Tour of Italy as well. Until we meet again, I'm Phil Liggett saying goodbye.